Right everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking you through camera shot types and camera angles. Um, in this video I'm going to go through the various different camera shots and angles that you need to be aware of. But in more, what we're also going to be looking at is how these shot types are specifically used to create effect and create meaning. Because one thing you've got to consider in any piece of visual media, whether it's you know a poster or a TV show, a trailer for a film or... Yeah, anything really, anything that's got some sort of visual aspect to it, each shot that you're seeing has been specifically chosen for a reason. Okay, there is a reason behind that shot. It's not just there because it looks pretty. Okay, so why are we learning this? We need to, or you, sorry, need to understand how different shot types can be used to create meaning. But you also need to know this because you're going to be applying this understanding to a lot of the written work that you're going to be doing as well as your own practical production work as well you need to be specifically considering which shot types you want to use and why you want to use those what's the effect that you want to try and create through using those shot types okay so there are loads and loads and loads of different shot types that we could be looking at in this video but we for the qualification you're doing you don't need to know loads of them. So what I've done is I've narrowed it down to this list of shot types that you need to be aware of. And these are the ones that we're going to be looking at in today's video. So we've got extreme close up, close up, medium shot slash mid shot, long shot, extreme long shot slash establishing shot, low angle shot, high angle shot, top top shot slash vertical shot, Dutch tilt, two shot, over the shoulder shot, point of view shot, and a shallow depth of field. So this is a list of shot types that you need to be aware of. If we really wanted to, we could have really broken this down and, and gone into a lot more detail. So we could have had things like medium close-up shots or medium long shots and really going to, you know, some really specific shot types. But we don't really need to worry about those ones too much. So this is the, this, these are the list of shots that we need to be aware of, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to look at every shot type on this list, and we're going to really just have a look at why these shots, how do, well first of all, how do you identify these shots, you know, how do you know that's the shot type you're looking at, but also what that shot type really is used for, okay, why is it often used in any form of visual media, okay. Okay, so obviously the first thing like I said, you need to be aware of is shot types are not just used because they're there to look particularly pretty. Okay, they are there for a reason. They want to create certain effects. Okay, and often as well, they will often be used to actually allow the audience to understand the story or to understand a character or to understand, you know, certain motivations. And that's purely done through the use of the shot types. Okay, things like showing characters' emotions as well. It's all done through the choice of shot types, along with a few other things as well that we're not going to go into in this video. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is an extreme close-up, okay? So you can see here you've got this nice little shot here of two fingers pressing a button, okay? Now an extreme close-up is really used when the creator wants to draw the audience's attention to a really specific detail. And that detail is something that you wouldn't normally be able to notice if the shot was a little bit too far away. So obviously if you look at this shot here, the director of this film, which I can't remember what it is, I think it might be Baby Driver, but anyway, they obviously want you to be aware that this person, whoever it is, is pressing this particular red button. Okay, if that was a long shot or a medium shot, then that detail wouldn't quite be as obvious. But because they've used an extreme, extreme close-up, then it signals to the audience that this particular action is very, very important. You might also see things like extreme close-ups of people's, you know, facial features, like an eye, potentially something like that, okay? But it's really anything that is, you know, trying to specifically draw audiences' attention to really small details, okay? So you can see quite clear there. That's quite a straightforward one. And all these shot types we're going to look at today, they're all, they're all quite straightforward. There's nothing that's too particularly challenging. So, moving back, we're looking at a close-up. Okay, <clears throat> this is one of the most iconic close-ups ever used in film from The Passion of Joan of Arc. I think it's one of the first ever uses of close-up, certainly a very early one. So, to identify a close-up, the easiest way to consider it is looking at someone's face. So, in this shot here, you can see that this woman's face is all in shots. Okay, we can see her face clearly. We can see a little bit of the background, but mainly our attention is purely focused on her face. Now... The reason behind using that particular shot type is to show mainly to show 
emotions or feelings in a character. So because you've got the close up here, you can see this woman, she looks very sad, she looks very sort of weary, she's got teardrops dripping down her cheek. So from looking at that particular shot type, it allows the audience to know how this particular person is feeling, okay? And that can really give you information about a person's character, their motivations, how they're feeling, you know, their frame of mind, purely through that close-up. And again, similar to the extreme close-up shot, if that shot type was a little bit further out, you wouldn't necessarily notice that, okay? Yes, you can still see some of the background there, but that's not really the important thing, okay? If we needed to look at the background as well, then we'll probably go for a medium shot, but because the director has chosen to use a close-up there, it's almost like a telling us, look, this is what you should be focusing on. You should be focusing on this person's face so you can understand how she's feeling. So close-ups, mainly, most commonly used to show emotions. They show feelings and characters, okay? Right, moving back, we're looking at medium shots, okay? Now, medium shots quite an interesting one because it is the most common shot type that you would expect to see in any sort of visual media. However, really, there's, there's no particular meaning behind using a medium shot other than the fact that you get to see pretty much a little bit of everything you need to see in the shot. So from this medium shot here from Dunker, you can see that you've got, you know, from about the waist up of Kenneth Branagh here, but you can also see a little bit of the background as well, okay? Sometimes medium shots are called cowboy shots because, you know, normally you would see, you know, the shot ending around about the waistline where a cowboy's belt might be but you get a nice healthy mix of both the settings the surroundings the background and the actual character themselves as well so you see just enough emotion and just enough of the actual setting as well so from this one here you can see that he's got a bit of a concerned expression on his face but you can also see the background as well of him being out at sea which might create a sense of isolation or a little bit of sort of like a dangerous setting Okay, long shot. Now, easy way to identify a long shot is if you can see a character clearly from head to toe with a little bit of negative space around the top to the bottom. Now, with a long shot, it's more often than not you will see a long shot which is mainly there to emphasize the relationship between the character and the setting that they're in. So realistically, with this shot here, you can tell that we're meant to be looking at the setting. So you've got this old derelict house, and this is from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, you've got the old derelict house there, which, and you wouldn't be able to see that setting if the shot was a little bit closer in. Okay, so it's mainly there to establish some more of the setting and a little bit of the character as well. Okay, but how you identify a long shot from head to toe, okay, and a little bit of space around the outside. Okay. Now this, this next shot has got two different names. So this is an extreme long shot, but it's also called, can be called an establishing shot, okay? Now we're gonna use establishing shot because it's probably the one that's most easy to remember. So if you think about the word establishing, you start to establish means to set something up, okay? So you will often see establishing shots at the start of a scene, okay? And that's usually something like, I don't know, a landscape or a particular setting, okay? and. The reason that shot type is used is because it pretty much tells the audience. It establishes the scene for the audience. So you might often see a film opening with an establishing shot. And that establishing shot will tell you so much about the setting, the situation, the atmosphere, you know, the time of day of where you're particular where the film is set. So say for example, you look at this establishing shot here, you've got this bleak, wintry, dreary um landscape okay it's very snowy it's very dark it's very cold so obviously that sets up the the entire tone of the scene it might be quite tense it's quite bleak it's quite atmospheric okay if this were you also know it's set at winter time obviously because you've got a lot of snow there as well okay and you've also got this little character that you can see here as well and the fact that you can't really see much of that character there suggests that they may be a little bit isolated because there's nothing else around them other than this bleak snowy landscape okay so establishing shots or an extreme long shot you usually see them at the start of a scene they establish location atmosphere time of day time of year they set up the context for the scene okay so you will see this most commonly at the start of scenes okay so now we're going to move on to angles so angles are quite simple so 
The first one we want to look at is a low angle shot. Now a low angle shot is more commonly used to make whatever is in the shot, or the subject is what we call it, to make the subject appear dominant. It doesn't necessarily have to be a person. Okay, obviously in this shot here you've got these two guys here looking down at you. And that's how it creates that sense of dominance because you're looking at it, you, it gives the impression that the people or the objects in the shot are looking down on you. Okay, it makes them look more physically imposing, more dominant. It gives them, you know, more authority. Okay, it's almost like they're looking down on you, the audience member. Okay, you might often see with things like buildings as well. Sometimes you might see a big, looming, low angle shot of a huge skyscraper or something like that. But the low angle gives the impression that you are looking up at whatever the subject of the shot is and it makes them look dominant. Okay, now as you might expect, a high angle shot gives the exact opposite effect, okay? So it almost is like a bit of a role reversal from the low angle shot, all right? So it suggests that you are looking down on whatever is in the shot and it makes the people in the shot feel more inferior. It makes them look weak, it makes them look vulnerable. So you can see here you've got Thor and Captain America, you've got that quite high angle shot looking down on them and they look weaker because they appear to be smaller. If you compare these two shots against each other, Okay, look how big these guys look. Okay, and he's got a massive knife. But we're looking, they're looking down on us, whereas this one, we're looking down on them. So it makes them look inferior, it makes them look more vulnerable, more weak. Okay, you will often see a lot of films where they will do what's called a shot reverse shot, which is where you have two shots corresponding with each other to create effect. So you might have a low angle shot followed by a high angle shot, and then vice versa, and that creates you know, a sense of dominance between two characters because one character is looking down on another character, perhaps. Okay, so next one is top angle vertical shot. This is also called a bird's eye view, okay? Now, this is very similar to an establishing shot, okay? You'll often see vertical shots or bird's eye view shots that depict the setting from a vertical angle, okay? And again, it really it establishes a scene. It can sometimes be used almost like an extreme version of the high angle shot to create like an insignificant, you know, weak feel, but then they're not quite as common as high angle shots, to be honest. Okay, Dutch tilt is an unusual one. It's something that's seen quite a lot, but a lot of people don't notice it. So if you look at this particular shot here of the Joker, you'll notice that the camera is tilted and leading to the left hand side. So if you look at these straight lines in the background, they're going diagonally. And that's how you know the camera is set at a bit of a tilt. Okay, it's tilted to one side. Now that's used quite a lot, especially to it gives the it gives a very disorientated feel. Okay, it makes the subject appear sort of I don't know how to describe it, weird in a way, I suppose, okay, it's disorientating, it, it's quite uncomfortable, you see, for those of you who've seen The Dark Knight, you'll see a lot of Dutch tilt shots when the Joker is on screen, okay, because it creates the fact that the Joker is such a unhinged, strange, off-kilt character, okay, and it, it creates a very uncomfortable view. Okay, so when the camera is tilted slightly to one side, it can be left or right, either or. Okay, two shots. <clears throat> two shots, quite simple. A shot that's got two people in a frame. Really, really simple. That You can go further and look at three shots, okay, and solo shots as well, but we're not going to bother looking at that. So, two shots are nice and simple. You've got two people in a shot. Now, it's not, not just the fact that you might have two people in a shot, but it's also, you know, you need to look at things like the way that the, pe the two people are in the shot, you know, because it, it, the two shot can establish a relationship between two characters. If they're quite close together, for example, then obviously that suggests they're quite close. Whereas if they're quite far away and there's a lot of negative space there, that can again impact on the relationships or the links between the two characters. Okay, so two shot, nice and simple, two people in the shot, usually very similarly framed as well. So you look at these two people here from. I think it's from a Pitch Perfect film, they take up a similar amount of space in the frame. So they're quite equally weighted characters in terms of their dominance because they are quite evenly distributed in the frame, if that makes sense. Okay, over the shoulder shot is literally what it says in the tin. It is a shot 
from over someone's shoulder, okay? So you've got this shot here. You can see these two people are clearly in conversation with each other because we're looking over the shoulder of one character and we can see the face of another character. Now, the reason why over the shoulder shots are used, especially in conversations, is because it suggests that the two people are close together. You know that these two characters are really close to each other because of the over the shoulder shot, okay? If this guy here was out of the frame and he was talking to seemingly nothing, it would imply that he's a little bit further away. So because we can see both the people in the same shot, we as audiences know that those two characters are really close to each other and they're in conversation with each other, okay? Okay, point of view shot. Again, does we said in the tin really. It depicts a shot from the point of view of the character. So we see what they see, okay? Really, it's as simple as that. And obviously that is really used to put us in the shoes of the characters whose point of view we're looking at it from. We see what they're seeing, and in a sense, we also feel how they're feeling as well. Okay, it establishes that connection between us and the character. So I think this is from a Spider-Man film here. I think it's from the, yeah, Spider-Man. Um, so we can see here, he's looking at his hands, he's obviously checking out his powers, okay? And so we're, we're sort of doing the same thing that he's doing. He's looking at his hands, you know, curious as to what's going on with all this equipment and kit around there. And we're doing the same thing because we're looking at it from his point of view, okay? So it establishes that connection between us and the character who's point of view is we're looking at it from okay okay last one i think this is the last one and last one is called a shallow depth of field now this is again a really really common one that not a lot of people you know pay that much attention to so if you look at this shot here which is from the social network you can see we've got two characters here we've got andrew garfield in the middle and jesse eisenberg in the in the front <clears throat> but andrew garfield's character is in focus, okay? Even though the picture's not best quality, he's in focus. Jesse Eisenberg's character is blurry. So, that's called a shallow depth of field. It's where part of the frame is blurry and part of the frame isn't blurry. Now what that means is that's the director saying to us, we need to be focusing on this particular guy here. Okay, because he's in focus, he's more important. Whereas all these people in the background and this guy in the foreground, they're not as important because they're blurry. Okay, so whichever part of the shot is in focus, that's what we need to be focusing on. You will often see shots where the depth of field will switch halfway through. And I believe that does actually happen in this scene. So later on, the blurriness will switch and this guy will come into focus and this guy will go out of focus. Okay, so it's basically the director giving us a big honking horn saying this is where you need to be looking at. Okay, this bit here. Yes, these bits are also quite important as well, but not as important as this bit. So it can, you know, it can give the impression of who is the more dominant character. If they're more in focus, then they're more likely to be a more dominant character. Whereas if they're out of focus, they're more likely to be a little bit less important. Okay, or at least not as important to the scene it is you're watching. Okay, so... Those are all the basic shot types that you need to know about for all the work we're doing. But what you need to be thinking about is when you are making your practical work, which we'll do later on, and also when we're doing our textual analysis tasks, you need to be thinking, right, why have those shot types been used? What's the purpose for it? Okay, what's the meaning? What's the effect that it has on the audience? Okay, you does it help establish a character? Does it make them look stronger or weaker? Does it create tension? Does it, you know, make you feel on edge? Does it, you know, create a sense of isolation? Does it establish a scene? Whatever. Then all shot types are there for a specific reason. Okay, that's the thing you really need to take away from this video, okay? Um, it's not just about practicality, all right? It's about effect, it's about meaning, all right? So when you're thinking about your coursework, you might be thinking, right, okay, what sort of effect do I want to create? And what sort of shot type am I gonna to use to make that effect, okay? Do I want this person to look weaker? Yes, then I'll probably use a, um, a high angle shot, okay? Do I want this person to look dominant? Then yeah, I'll use a low angle shot. Do I want to show that this person's scared? Right, I'll use a close up shot. Okay, so it's those little things you need to be thinking about. Okay, so that's pretty much it for shot types and camera angles. Any questions or anything at all you don't understand or you want me to go through again, send me an email, all right? But that's pretty much it.